The model has outperformed giants such as OpenAI, Azure, and of course Google in recognizing African accents. It is also training its next generation Sahara Titan model to understand, transcribe, and to translate between 20 of Africa's top languages such as Swahili, Hausa, and Zulu. Well, let's find out more about this model. We're now joined by Toby Olatunji. He's the CEO of uh, Intron. Great to have you with us uh, on the show, Mr. Olatunji. Now, of course, it is obvious uh, that Africa is still underserved uh, when it comes to big tech. In fact, uh, I don't know how many times Alexa has mispronounced uh, my name. So give us a sense uh, of what ways uh, this model is integrating Africa's needs. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. As you said, um, even simple examples like Google Maps trying to say a street name or um, your Siri or asking it to play some music. And we we regularly see these models fail uh, very badly, uh, particularly with 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 African names, African currencies, and and. I think an easy way to understand why this happens is that this this company is trained with massive amounts of data from across the world, and as it's already commonly known that the training data for these models, uh, the, 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 the proportion from Africa is maybe sometimes less than 5%. So you can imagine that the models optimize uh, to do um, better on the majority uh, data that they're trained on. And that, that ultimately produces models that are very good for some, mm -hmm. some people, but uh, at the expense of some other types of model. Right. Yep. And so what we, we have done is take uh, is to focus on collecting data from the continent. So we have a platform where today we have about 3.5 million audio um, samples contributed by over 18,000 people across Africa. So um, things like names, currencies, numbers, things that many of these models feel at. We have made that our our strength and build models that that do much better, that, that listen to an African name and can actually pronounce it or um, understand it, transcribe it correctly. Mm -hmm. and, and then take these models and serve the, the um, customers' communities where these people come from. Right. But of course, how do we use this uh, in our day-to-day -day lives? How do we ap apply it to our day-to-day -day lives? Give us a more insight into some of uh, those practical applications uh, that f using Sahara so far. Yeah. Um, I mean, three, three come to mind immediately. Uh, first, healthcare. So you see your... Um, doctor take notes with a keyboard or even pen and paper, now they're able to go do that with voice. And you can basically do a long conversation for 20 minutes with your doctor, 15 minutes, and then the AI can help transcribe that and create a clinical note. One one other really useful case we've um, done is in the court. So you, uh, you, you have a judge, have witness, you have the attorneys, and there's a lot of talking and a lot of, of writing being done. And so that takes away from the time they spend focusing on the actual delivery of justice. After the court hearing, they have to transcribe right judgment. So there's a lot of manual labor going there, back and forth, writing, reviewing stuff. And then once you bring voice AI into the mix, it's able to just listen to all the um, speakers in, in court, transcribe that, that accurately and help them uh, produce court transcripts that can be handed off or even like um, um, lawmakers, just all these hearings and speeches that go on. And there's, there's, a, there's a very, it's a difficult like task to document all that uh, that's happening. Voice AI goes in there and is and is able to help make that easy. Just cut that time in in over half. Call centers is um, one one other very useful um, uh, use case where we're working with multiple call centers. They they, they review um, thousands of hours of audio every day, but it's it's impossible to process all that data and come out with insights for the. Um, product teams to say, okay, based on all the um, calls we had last week, what are the top three or four things that we need to fix? And there's there's no system that can do that um, today for many companies. And, and so Voice AI processes all these calls and is able to then uh, process that and generate insights for the company. Mm. Now, I'd like to ask, when we talk about uh, AI in the African context, is it only about language? Uh, what other ways are, your tra are you training uh, your next generation models to sort of tailor the AI experience for the African need? Uh, fantastic question. So almost all these use cases I've 
covered there there in English. Um, most of our models today are in English, but there's a huge demand for not just um, English or like uh, national languages, but to support also local languages. So we're working with um, nonprofits to to build um, to go from just chatbots to voice bots that can talk to um, mothers, um, talk to farmers, and help them improve communication. One really in interesting use case is when, um, let's say you're a bank or a fintech, you're trying to sign up new users. They have this long forms that people have to um, write out their names and just like three, four, five pages. Can we take that and just do that in, in voice and have the person communicate in their local languages and making um, uh, voice interactions more more um, natural, more um, um, relatable for even users that can't speak English or French or, or any of this like, uh, languages. Right. Now, of course, uh, every day, there's pretty much every day now, there's something new. There's a new development uh, surrounding artificial uh, intelligence. Uh, basically, we're in the middle of an AI gold rush right now. Now, generative AI uh, is, of course, developing at a breakneck uh, speed. Has there been meaningful AI adoption across Africa, or are we lagging behind what's going on uh, globally right now? Great question. Um, there is a lot happening all over the world, and everyone is trying to um, catch up, no doubt. However, we're seeing that in Africa, across Africa, um, multiple countries where we um, um, collaborate with partners, there are some very straightforward use cases that um, people are working on. So you can imagine, um, just from a from a medical um, standpoint, call centers, people are doing document process people are doing image processing so there's there's a there's a bunch of use um cases across africa where um it's not just the hype but we're actually able to translate the, the those those um um new models into actual value one i mean i talked about healthcare earlier we just mm. finished a project with a hospital where all their doctors are now able to use voice and they i mean they they shared with us that they are three to four times faster um mm. With, well, now with voice and then when they had to just use the keyboard to do their notes and and so that's that's just um going from hype to actual value for 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 patients locally um across africa reducing the amount of time they have to wait um to, to see the doctor and 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 so yeah it, it there's there, there is a lot of hype but i think it may take us a, a bit more time but there is already translation even with governments we're working with um governments to deploy ai there's there's so many tasks that people are realizing these things have taken us so long in in the past but now we're able to use ai to borrow or very difficult tasks the tasks that 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 ai can can take care of yeah, well, it's certainly an exciting uh, topic. We'd love to continue discussing, but we have to leave it there. Many thanks for joining us, uh, Mr. Ola Tunji.